Hello folks, uh, after seeing my last video where I had integrated API.ai with Google BigQuery's public data set, many folks had asked me the code for the same. I do not have the code uh, in a good shape to share yet, but that's what my goal here is. In this video, what I'm going to do is try and uh, show you how to have your webhook ready and deployed on uh, Google App Engine, which will later then talk to uh, the public BigQuery dataset. Uh, currently, the way the uh, framework is or the webhook is in, uh, all it's going to do is just come back and say hello when you talk to, uh, when you use API.ia. For example, when I say hello, right now it comes back and says, nope, I'm not talking to you. That's because in my default intent, uh, uh, that's the text response or the default response. We're going to go enable the fulfillment wherein we're going to choose a webhook. But before that, let's go ahead and deploy a webhook. Here are the steps at a high level. Uh, what I like to do is uh, for my development machine, uh, which is where I'll develop and uh, deploy the uh, Google app or the webhook on the Google app engine, I like to use uh, instance, a compute engine instance on Google Cloud. That will help me with uh, simplifying the steps as far as uh, authentication for BigQuery dataset and all that goes. If you wanted to do this locally on your machine, you f uh, feel free to do so. I'm going to post some links. Uh, so I'm going to use a Ubuntu machine on the Compute Engine server as my development uh, environment. And uh, so let's start off. Let's first go to Google App Engine or Google Cloud. I'm going to go create uh, a compute engine. Uh, where did that go? I like to use Ubuntu as my operating system. I'm going to leave it as at one CPU. Uh, you could select small if you wanted to. That should be enough for your development, actually. Ubuntu 16 LTS. I'm going to leave everything as default. This shouldn't be required, but I'm going to select it anyway. I don't care at the moment. I'm going to even give it full access to all cloud APIs. Say create. This cost should cost you 24 bucks a month, and if you're new to Google App, uh, Google Cloud, the $300 credit that they give you should suffice for uh, a year. You should be good for running your development server for a year if you were to leave it on 24 hours, which you don't really need to. So here, I'm going to go directly into SSH. And let's start off. I'm going to go to the next step, which is to install the SDK. I have some URLs here, which I'll put in the description. So SDK for App Engine, while my SSH is coming up. Let me go there. I'm going to choose the flexible environment. Uh, there is a there is a link here which shows you the difference between the two environments in case you want to go take a look at it. But I'm going to go for the flexible environment. So Python. So download and install the SDK. Let me go there. I'm going to select Ubuntu. Okay, so this thing is a little interesting. What I have seen when I use Shell is uh, the control shift V, sometimes the uh, command shows up here, but when you hit enter, nothing really happens. So we will know in the next few minutes if uh, something's really happening. If not, you really need to type that, which is a little painful. No, it did, it did work. I'm just following all these steps here, getting the public key. see all the stuff if you don't see this that means you know uh, when you type in the command and hit enter if you don't see this that means something's not working right and you might have to type the actual command which is a little painful I'm assuming if you use your own SSH client uh, like putty or something then this issue would not be there there you go what is this doing uh, uh, this is updating and installing the uh, Google Cloud SDK 
while that's done I'm also going to uh, install the Python environment I'm going to be using Python for my webhook the reason again the reason why I am using uh, a Google computer engine as my development server is it 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 simplifies the authentication process and all that uh, the only drawback would be you know you won't have something like PyCharm or any other IDE where you'll be doing your development you'll be doing a development on the server well you could still do it in an IDE and then just directly keep uploading your uh, Python module uh, from your local machine so here we are uh, I'm now going to install the optional Python package control shift V what I want is Python okay that is done next as it says I need to go ahead and initialize my G cloud so we're just going to do uh, G cloud in it G cloud in it and I'm going to say uh, choose the account you would like to perform the operation for this configuration I'm not going to choose the default service account instead I'm going to log say log in with a new account say yes what you need to do is copy this guy here and paste it in the browser select your account say allow copy this code put it in here you'll be stuck with having to type it uh, select the project in your case I'm assuming you might have only uh, one project so uh, you might have to if you don't have that one project you might have to select uh, create a new project option in my case I'm just gonna go to one which is my API AI project so do you want to set up a computer engine I would say no what is next uh, G cloud is done now you're gonna have to uh, clone the uh, github uh, the sam the example of the code that I have on github so here's the code uh, it's on github and I basically took code from a uh, Python flask skeleton that I had taken from this particular page and then uh, added a module uh, for api.ai uh, basically a quick look at that module if I go to main.py I believe the hello was already there. I added API AI underscore response. That's a post method. And again, right now, all it does is this is a response from GAE. That's all it will come back and say. Uh, let's go ahead and do the get clone. Control Shift V. So there it's cloning the application. So now I have everything here under this folder called API.ai. All my code is here. I like to use nano uh, to do anything that I need to do. But uh, here's all the code. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just test this code locally. Dev app server.py and this is running what I'm gonna do is while that's running I'm just going to open up another instance of SSH and then let's do a call localhost 8080 there it comes back and says uh, hello beautiful world which is what's there in my code so if you go take a look at main.ap main.py it says uh, hello beautiful world and uh, if I were to try and do a call on api.ai it'll come back and say that the method is not allowed because it's a post method but that's okay for now so now uh, let's go ahead R right now this uh, application is running locally on my Google compute engine what we need to do is go ahead and deploy this code 
on uh, the Google App Engine. So what I'm gonna do is CD G Cloud deploy no G Cloud app deploy. So it's gonna say, uh, do you want to? deploy the uh, app to the target URL api.ea so and so to dot uh, appspot.com basically this current application to Google App Engine I'm gonna say yes uh, well this is saying uploading zero files because I had already done this before uh, but if I were to change anything or you know in your case when you do this for the first time it's gonna upload a few files and uh, or all the files and uh, deploy this on your local app engine and then it will also give you the URL so make sure you make a note of this URL so I'm gonna go here and just gonna paste it here now uh, let's try this in the browser actually first same thing as we did earlier like the curl you should be able to now see it in the browser you see how it says hello beautiful world and if I do API AI, just gonna say method not allowed, which is fine, it's expected. Now I go back to API.ai and remember how previously when I said hello, the agent was upset with us and said, Nope, I'm not talking to you. So let's do some fulfillment here. I had already done this before, but and that's why it's here. But you post the URL here. Uh, slash api.ai whatever your url is and slash api.ai save this and this time when i say hello let's see what the response is this is a response from google app engine so here is your response from google google app engine if i were to go ahead and change this for example nano main.py and uh, you, you see the speech here uh during YouTube demo okay I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna again say G cloud app deploy say yes right now it's modif uploading that one file again as I mentioned earlier in your case the first time you do it it will be uploading all the files in that API AI folder Give it a couple of seconds there you go that is done so let's try again uh, I say hello and uh, says this is a response from Google App Engine during the YouTube demo uh, so the modification that I did to the webhook is done it's now showing up in my api.ai response uh, one other thing if you see in my code hopefully I still have it let me go look do you see how I have these info lines you know, I'm just trying to use it for some debugging. Uh, it's using the uh, logging module. Uh, I'm saying uh, L dot info, uh, whatever. You know, if you need to do this for some debugging, uh, here I have said reach the API.ai response module and exiting the API response module. Here is where you would see all the stuff. I should be logging here. Yeah, logging. That's a better place to go to it from. I go to logging. And uh, do you see all this AP slash api.ai? So basically, uh, here is it. Where is it gone? Not this portion, but the second one here. Reached API AI response module, exiting the response module. And this was the previous get method where we just said uh, hello. Uh, this one here. Uh, you're gonna reach the hello module that's there again just uh, showing you how you could do some debugging if you wanted to uh, yeah that was a quick look at how you could implement uh, API a webhook for api.ai uh, on Google App Engine uh, again the purpose was purpose of doing it here is preparing your framework so you can then talk to your webhook can then talk to uh, the Google BigQuery data set. In this case, I'm going to use the public uh, data set, as you had seen in my example below. So, uh, 
stay tuned for the next video and the code i'm going to post some uh, urls in the description of the video do not forget to check those please and uh, hopefully this was a simple a straightforward and quick enough for you uh, thank you for watching uh, and hope it helped have a great rest of the day